Welcome to 28storms.com. This is an overnight update on Tropical Storm Don. As we head into the early morning hours of Friday the 28th, we will easily be within the 24-hour window of a tropical storm landfall along the lower Texas coast. As of the 10 p.m. advisory from the National Hurricane Center, Don is now packing maximum sustained winds of 50 miles per hour. This is a slight increase from the 45 mile per hour winds we were seeing earlier this afternoon. Don is moving off toward the west-northwest at 14 miles per hour and is expected to make a landfall along southern Texas shortly after 7 p.m. Friday with the greatest rainfall and winds occurring during the overnight hours. This is the three-day precipitation forecast issued by the Hydro Meteorological Prediction Center as of 7 p.m. Thursday. Now keep in mind, since this was posted, the track along with the center has been shifted a bit more toward the south and west, so you can more than likely take the highest rainfall expectations and shift them just a few more miles to the south here, a little bit closer to Brownsville, although the highest rainfall should still remain ever so slightly to your north. And the highest rainfall totals expected from HPC are within the three to four inch range now keep in mind though that if you get under one of those bands there will be some risk of isolated street flooding especially if you live in some of the low-lying areas so just keep that in mind but overall this will be beneficial to the drought situation across much of southern Texas but it won't completely end your drought because again we're only talking about a few inches of rainfall and then if we look further toward the north into Houston and Galveston this is really looking like a non-event you will not be getting much in the way of rainfall at all especially if those outer bands remain to your south and the tropical storm forest winds will be confined to the middle and lower half of the Texas coastline. This is almost becoming a now cast with landfall within the next 24 to 30 hours. But if we look at the latest spaghetti model plots, we see that there is a very strong con consolidation here between Brownsville and Corpus Christi, especially along Padre Island National Seashore. It's really hard to make out on this graphic, but the latest intensity forecast from the LGEM and DSHIP models indicate that Tropical Storm Don will max out with a peak intensity of about 55 knots, which is what the National Hurricane Center is going with. Now, earlier yesterday morning, we alluded to one of the reasons behind Tropical Storm Don struggling along the northern half of the Yucatan Peninsula were some of these cooler sea surface temperatures here along the northern half of the coast, but it, it has now since moved off into warmer waters and we're beginning to see more of a convective blow up. In fact, the storm was most impressive nearly two hours ago when we had a convective burst located directly over the center. And in the meantime, the National Hurricane Hunters were flying directly through the center of the storm and they were beginning to find lowest pressure readings of about 995 to 996 millibars, which is fairly significant because just about 12 to 18 hours prior to that, the pressure had risen to about 1,005 millibars. So that was a pretty noteworthy decrease in the central pressure, but they did not find a significant increase in the wind speeds. Again, as of that 10 p.m. advisory, the winds were only bumped up to about 50 miles per hour. And within the past one hour or so on the infrared, some of those strongest cloud tops have begun to warm. And also, if we look off toward the northeast quadrant, we're beginning to see a bit more of a restriction once again as that northerly and easterly wind shear continues to come into play. Over the last 24 hours, I've made it pretty clear that I do not anticipate Tropical Storm Don becoming a hurricane, and you can still see the rationale behind that forecast on the most recent water vapor animation. We do still have that favorable upper-level pocket of light upper-level winds here across the central Gulf of Mexico, and that's why Don has strengthened ever so slightly this evening. But once again, we still have that upper-level low over northern Mexico, and then that secondary upper-level disturbance moving across the western Cuban region as it moves into the eastern Gulf. And that's really limiting the amount of space that this storm has to really take off. And there's just too many atmospheric things going on across the region. I don't think it's going to be able to make it to hurricane status. None of the forecast models show it becoming a Category 1. So I don't feel that rapid development is going to be... Uh, a strong concern. I think that it's going to come in as a moderate to strong tropical storm. Really not that much more intense than it currently is. And once again, those three to four inches will be the main expectations. With the arrival of tropical storms often comes the risk of isolated tornadoes. In this situation, it only looks like a brief one or two tornadoes is the expected outcome of this. We're now looking at the zero to three kilometer helicity for the evening hours of Friday night and we do see a slight spike here in excess of about two to three hundred here along the immediate Texas coast so we can't rule out a one or two isolated brief tornadoes and also very quickly if we look at the zero to six kilometer affected bulk shear we do see a slight increase here in excess of about thirty to forty knots 
So once again, we can't rule out an isolated brief one or two tornadoes, but that is not the primary threat with this storm. Now before I leave you overnight, I do want to make you aware of a tropical wave that we're closely monitoring here in the central Atlantic. The latest outlook from the National Hurricane Center gives us about a 20% chance of tropical cyclone formation within the next 48 hours. But this will be a feature that we will be watching throughout the short term and medium range. And especially if you live over here in the Northeast Caribbean, along the Lesser Antilles and even the Greater Antilles, keep an eye out on this feature because it is heading off in your direction. This animation starts off with visible imagery, but as we go into the overnight hours, it transitions to the overnight infrared, and we can still make out a very good, well-defined, low-level circulation. We don't know if there's a closed surface circulation at this time, but it does look fairly good considering that it just came off the coast of Africa a few days ago. If we look at the latest infrared, we do see that convection is flaring in close proximity to where that overall low-level circulation was located. If we go ahead and look at the latest water vapor imagery, we do see a strong presence of dry air out ahead of this tropical wave, but we do have a good surge of moisture that's going to be lifting toward the north and west in response to the intertropical convergence zone also moving along with the tropical wave. And also the vertical wind shear is fairly light. We don't see any strong troughs of, of low pressure beginning to move toward the storm. And so the upper level shear environment is pretty good, and that's going to help mitigate the threat of dry air intrusion. As long as the shear remains light, the dry air will not be as much of a factor as it ordinarily could be. This is the shear chart from the SIMS website. The location of our tropical wave is located at around 10 degrees north and 40 degrees west, which places it right around here at the bottom of your screen. And then if we look at the upper level chart we see that there is a very good upper level ridge located directly over the tropical wave in question so overall this is a favorable environment this will have to be monitored in the coming days for any additional signs of organization we already talked about the well-defined low-level circulation but I do have additional evidence to prove that this is the 850 millibar vorticity chart as you can see we do have a fairly good spike here it's actually not even that far off from what we're seeing with tropical storm Don that's not to say we're anywhere close to having a tropical storm out here in the Atlantic but nonetheless this is very impressive for a fairly new tropical disturbance we're also quite fortunate that the ASCAT microwave satellite was able to capture a glimpse of the tropical wave as it came through 40 degrees west longitude at around 7 p.m. or excuse me 10 p.m. yesterday evening and here we see a very distinct low-level circulation right here it's not overly strong just yet but it's definitely present I always like to show the precipitable water animation for the last few days just to gain an overall perspective as to what's occurring across the basin and there's the tropical wave and then toward the very end of the frame you can still make out that well-defined low-level circulation as it gradually moves on off toward the west-northwest and closer to land. The following is a seven-day GFS forecast. This is the 18Z run. The initialization shows a very weak area of low pressure associated, associated with the tropical wave here near 40 degrees west and as I start the animation you'll see that it is a suspect area to watch the model doesn't really develop it but that is in contrast to what the CMC is showing but by the end of the period you see, we see that it's now moving over Hispaniola so it's going to be over the Northeast Caribbean within five to six days and then spreading over the Greater Antilles by day seven now there's two things to look at on the 12Z CMC. First off, I would just like to draw some attention to development in the Eastern Pacific. Some of the models are still continuing to hint at development here within the next three days, and there is a 10 to 20 percent outlined area by the National Hurricane Center. So we're going to take a look at the satellite imagery. But if we look off into the Atlantic, we see that the Canadian does see the tropical wave, and then toward the end of the period, once we get into the Northeast Caribbean, it does show a very weak tropical depression or tropical storm located just to the south of San Juan here. This is the CMC shear forecast. There's the favorable upper level ridge that we saw on the SIMS wind shear analysis. And if we look through the period, that upper level ridge is also forecast to move off toward the west. In the medium range, the upper level ridge is located over the Lesser Antilles at the exact same time that the tropical wave is expected to do so. And it continues to move on off toward the west here with the tropical wave. One thing that adds credibility to the favorable CMC shear forecast is that despite the GFS not forecasting much in the way of development, it shows the same exact shear pattern. There's the upper level ridge, and I'm going to let this go. This is the seven day forecast. That upper level ridge continues to move off into the Eastern Caribbean. Just for me good measure, the European ECMWF model is also seeing the same type of outcome. This is the tropical wave. This is day one, two, 
three, four, five, six. The model is not truly showing development, but it does maintain the integrity of the 850 millibar vorticity max associated with it. And by day six, it's beginning to move into the Virgin Islands. And last but not least, this is a next area to watch for in the Eastern Pacific. The National Hurricane Center gives this broad area of low pressure a 10% chance of formation within the next two days. The most recent visible and infrared imagery does show a weak low to mid-level circulation right around here, but convection is very sporadic and it's not very well defined at this current time. And if we look at the latest water vapor imagery, the overall pattern does look a bit favorable here, so we will be monitoring the Eastern Pacific over the next four to five days. So thanks again for visiting 28storms.com. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel to be the first to know whenever we upload a video. And also don't forget to like us on Facebook. A lot of times we will be posting updates on the tropical weather situations across the Atlantic and Eastern Pacific, along with severe weather updates throughout the day and evening hours. So those are the two easiest ways to keep in touch with 28storms.com throughout the day. And also don't forget to check out, of course, the main page for all of the latest and most detailed information, including links to a wide array of information so that you can track the storms on your own. So that's it for now. Check back soon for another video update.